Hi, I'm LFC Chameleon Soap. What we're going to discuss today is ground attack in the SU-25T, also known as the Tank OV. But first we're going to discuss some key principles to flying ground attack missions to increase your life expectancy and survivability in a combat scenario. Altitude. This is very important. Whenever you're unsure of what is underneath your plane, you should maintain a 3,000 meter altitude. There are some exceptions to this rule, but by staying above 3,000 meters, you ensure that any AAA or man pads will fail to acquire and kill you. Pre-planning. Prior to taking off, you should study your flight plan. Right shift plus K will also allow you to see the flight plan while you're flying, and you can use the bracket keys to change the page. But prior to taking off, you should study the plan well, and take note of where the target should be. The actual sortie should be planned as much as possible. It's important to react to changing conditions, but by having a solid plan before ever taking off, you ensure the best possible chance of reacting properly to any changes that may happen. Terrain There's multiple reasons that knowing the terrain of the combat area can help you. If you notice during the pre-flight planning that there's a mountain range to the left of the targets, you can use that to help increase your spatial awareness. Likewise, you can also use the peaks to hide yourself from AAA and enemy IR missiles. If the targets are along a coastline, you can fly over the ocean without having to worry about what's underneath your aircraft. The ocean may be flat, but that doesn't mean it's a bad idea to fly over it. Be smart and use the terrain to your advantage. Now that we've gone over some basic principles, let's discuss briefly some of the most important cockpit instruments. HSI, Horizontal Situation Indicator. The Horizontal Situation Indicator, or HSI, provides a top-down view of the aircraft in relation to the intended course. The compass rotates so that the current heading is always shown at the top. The course arrow shows the required heading and the bearing pointer points to the next waypoint. Distance to the next waypoint and required heading are shown numerically at the top. The ILS localizer and glide slope bars are also in the center. That was from the flight manual, but what does it all mean? Well, the yellow arrow is the bearing pointer, and the desired course arrow is the double white arrow. Ideally, you want the yellow arrow inside the double white arrow. This will ensure that you're en route and flying the correct course to the next waypoint. If the yellow bearing pointer is to the left of the white desired course arrow, it means that you need to fly to the left to get en route. If the yellow bearing pointer is to the right of the white desired course arrow, it means you need to fly to the right to get en route. Flying directly at the yellow bearing pointer will eventually correct your course and get you back en route. However, you can fly more to the left or right of the bearing pointer until it converges with the white desired course arrow to get back en route even faster. VVI, Vertical Velocity Indicator. The vertical velocity indicator measures the aircraft's vertical speed, the rate of climb or sink. The turn indicator shows the turn direction, although the rate of turn is only approximate. This instrument is vital when trimming your elevator. If your flight lead and your wingmen are trying to form up on you, it's much easier for them to get into position when you have a steady rate of climb or maintaining level flight. Remember, whenever you climb or descend, it's going to change your aircraft speed. Next, at the bottom of the VVI, is the slip indicator. The slip indicator is located at the bottom of the VVI. It can also be found on the ADI, which we won't go over in this lesson. The slip indicator is useful when turning. By staying on the bubble, you can serve more energy throughout your turn. To stay on the bubble, just apply a little bit of rudder the same direction that you're turning. AOA indicator and accelerometer. The angle of attack, or the AOA indicator, and the accelerometer display the current angle of attack and the G load on your aircraft. The left part of the indicator shows the angle of attack in degrees, while the G load is shown on the right part. The AOA indicator and accelerometer is a vital instrument to maximize your aircraft's agility. If you want the best turn possible for your current aircraft speed, place the AOA indicator as near to maximum as possible. If you hear this noise, then you're overdoing it. At best, the SU-25T can pull about 6.5 Gs and 20 degrees of angle of attack. SPO-15 Buryoza Radar Warning Receiver, or RWR. The RWR display indicates any threat radars that are painting your aircraft. Information is presented as symbols representing the type and direction to the threat. 
There's six illuminated symbols at the bottom of the display to notify you of the threat radar type. Unfortunately, the system indicates both enemy and friendly radars, which makes it somewhat cumbersome. The system provides detection of radar signals at the following angles. An azimuth of plus or minus 180 degrees and an elevation range of plus or minus 30 degrees. Sometimes when you bank and roll your aircraft, you may notice that the tones stop. That doesn't mean you're invisible or that they don't see you. It just means that you can't detect them seeing you. Around the top of the SPO-15, there are orbs with 90, 50, 30, 10, 10, 30, 50, 90 in them. This represents the direction to the threat. The rear aspect detection is somewhat crude compared to the front detection. However, it will still give you somewhat of an idea whether the threat is behind you to the left or behind you to the right. In the center, there is a red circle. When you're locked up, the indicator will light up along with a steady high frequency audio tone. If a radar guided missile launch is detected, the lock or launch light will flash along with the high pitched audio tone. If the B in the center of the plane is lit up, it means that the threat is above you. If the H in the center of the plane is lit up, it means that the threat is below you. If the B and H are lit up, that means it's around the same elevation. The yellow light strip that circles around the lock light represent emission power. Use this to determine when you're getting too close to a threat and when you are entering their threat envelope. If an active radar homing missile can be detected by the system after the missile establishes a lock with its own seeker, the missile will become the primary threat. The way to recognize if this is the case is that the emission strength will rise rapidly as the missile closes. At the bottom of the SPO-15 there's a line of six lights. These represent what the threat types are. The first light is perhaps the most troublesome. It represents an air superiority fighter that's on its way to kill you. In short, it represents an airborne radar. The second light represents a long range SAM radar. The third light represents a medium range SAM radar. The fourth light represents a short range radar. The fifth light represents an early warning radar. And the sixth light represents an AWACS aircraft. The maximum number of threats on the screen at once is unlimited. However, it will prioritize the number one threat, with any dimly lit lights representing secondary threats. Further information on SAM avoidance will be covered in a different chapter.